Hi there and welcome to part three of Witchcraft Shorts and it's me and my stick hanging out talking about magic. So in these shorts um, we are looking at, well they're not really shorts, I think on YouTube are shorts a minute. I'm kind of trying to stick to under five minutes which is an effort for me. <laughs> so in this edition, episode, um, soiree, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're going to be looking at altars. I'll say it's altars part one because I imagine that I will talk more about altars in the future and it is one of my favourite subjects though anyone that sees any of my videos know that everything is my favourite subject on these um, topics but altars are exceptionally close to my heart and we've looked at already the the outer world we've looked at kind of looking at outside looking at nature connecting with the seasons and the cycles and um in the first um when we looked at kind of reflecting on how we feel this is about the beginnings of creating a sacred space within your home and depending on your living situation whether you have kids whether you live um with parents or you're on your own it will really depend on what space or what time you can give to a sacred space in your own home but the magic, the power and the beauty of creating an altar and a place of magic at home is, is something that is a very important part of my life and a hugely important part of my practice. That you have a space in your home that you see every day and that connects you with what you find sacred, what you find magical, what you find empowering. Whether you're wanting inspiration, peace or connection to deities and connection to your guides. So creating an altar or a sacred space in your home is literally one of the first things I do before I even unpack my knickers when I move house. <laughs> I'm not even joking. So um, finding a space in your home, which is that is it. That's the magical place is, is really important. And you can have more than one. You can have as many altars as you like. You can have one in every room or you can just have a part of a bookcase or on top of a shelving unit somewhere or um, whatever works for you. There's so many different options. The most important thing about an altar is that it works for you, that it is a magical space for you to connect. And there's no hard and fast rules about what to put on an altar. If it is sacred, if it makes you feel empowered, magical, connected, um, focused, then that is good. Some of the, there's no size limits or um, you know, anything too small. People have mini travel altars and if you're in a really small apartment you can have a, an altar that you can put away and bring out again when it's right in time for you is really awesome too. Some of the altars I've loved the most have been um, small. They've been corner shelves. They've been um, top of a top of a, a dresser. Um, I have had massive altars in houses in the past. Now I've got a few altars in the house. Don't get me wrong, I've got a few, no surfaces. But the hearth altar, the main altar, isn't actually all that big. It's quite a small space. And it's a space where I connect with deity. It's a space where I honour deity. And it's a space where I put objects that I find in nature. Um, I'm good at kind of going out and finding and picking up random feathers and shells and stones with holes in and many, many, many other things. And... Um, seasonal goodies and I'll put them on there my drums are on there my rattles are on there um, and I have many antlers I collect antlers um, there's one top of the stick but you can't see it so it's the things that relate to your connection with the divine you can have an altar for a specific deity or for a specific pantheon um, I've got my a Norse pantheon altar here Pantheon's a funny old word, but a Norse god's altar here. And then I have um, different altars for different deities, for also for Bast, for Sekhmet, for dragons, for the Morrigan, for Bridget. You know, there's, there's a lot <laughs> going on in the house. So, uh, but my central altar, my hearth altar is here. And that's where um, the, the daily connection is. And when I say daily connection, it can be lighting a candle and saying hello, saying their names, saying a couple of words. So it doesn't have to be a huge endeavor a huge effort creating a sacred space no matter how small it could be you know a candle and a picture it could be an intention a focus and a, a photo or a, a shell and that can have as much power as a humongous setup a humongous altar it's not the size that counts it's the intention the energy and the love 
that you've put into it this altar is a reflection of your spiritual craft so make it something that makes you happy and brings you joy okay we're at the five minute mark i will leave it there for today but i'll talk more about altars another day i'll talk more about what you can do at altars how to approach altars and um, how you can set them up to work for you there is a live on my facebook page so you can find out more about altars i did a live with ellie townsend um so that's on my facebook page as of march 2023 and if you want to find out more about witchcraft the walking the witches path uh, course is open for registration and we start in April 2023 so uh, find out more I'll put the link down below thanks for watching guys Mwah. see you all soon have a great day bye